Good morning class, good morning learners. Welcome to today's class, whereby we're going to cover the block revision class for advanced financial management. And specifically, we're going to cover a topic of mergers and acquisition. Looking at mergers and acquisition. Mergers and acquisition. Mergers and acquisition mergers and acquisition and uh, specifically we are going to look at a question on uh, December 2022 2022 it was tested question number 5c as part of our revision and the question says alpha limited and beta limited are companies operating in the same line of business in the past a recent past, Alpha Limited has experienced very stiff competition from Beta Limited, such that Alpha Limited is considering acquiring Beta Limited in order to consolidate its market share. The following financial data is available about the two firms. So, I've been given the Alpha, the Beta, annual sales, net income, outstanding number of ordinary shares, earning per share, and market price per share. Both companies are in the 30% income tax bracket, so you are required maximum exchange ratio that alpha limited should agree to if it expects no dilution in the post acquisition earning per share so when you look at the exchange ratio as our number one we said that exchange ratio exchange ratio will be equal to non-dilutive non-dilutive offer price this is the offer price by the predator over the MPS of predator. And when you talk about the non dilutive offer price, non dilutive offer price, we say it is equal to PE ratio of predator, PE ratio of predator, that is before, and you multiply by the EPS of target. All these are before the acquisition. And uh, we say it. For you to get the PE ratio, this is MPS over EPS and multiplied by the EPS of target, which therefore will give us, when you look at the MPS, already we have been given for alpha, which is 30, and the EPS is 3. EPS of beta is 2, and therefore it will give you 20. Yeah, as our non dilutive offer price. And therefore, our ER, which is our exchange ratio, non dilutive over price, is 20 MPS over predator, which is 30, which will give you 2 over 3. So we shall give them 2 shares for every 3 shares that they have. That will be our exchange ratio. That one still you can express as a 2 is to 3. For every 2 shares, we shall give them 3 shares. And in that case, we shall not experience any dilution in ownership. Number two, the second part was Alpha Limited, post acquisition earning per share, if the company agree on an offer price of 40, so post EPS, post merger, post merger EPS. And when you're dealing with post merger EPS, this is earnings, eh? net income, net income of predator, we add net income of target, net income of target, income of target over shares, number of shares of predator, number of shares of predator plus new shares, new shares issued to target, issued to target. And in this case, the predator is alpha, that is a planning to acquire beta. And uh, when you look at Alpha, it had a net income of 150. And the net income of Beta was 20. Number of shares of Predator, it had outstanding number of shares of 50. And uh, the one for Beta, it had 10. But you are told they are agreeing now at an offer price of 40. So that means our exchange ratio now will be 40 over 30 or 4 for every 3. So this one will give us 170 
divide by this will be 50 so i can calculate that 50 plus 10 by 4 over 3 10 by 4 over 3 which will be 13.33 and uh, it will give us on 70 over 63.33 which will end up giving us read by 63.33 2.68 as our post merger EPS that is earning per share after the merger. Number three, Alpha Limited post acquisition earning per share E for every 200 ordinary shares of Beta Limited are exchanged for five units of 10% debenture of 500 per value. So in this case now we are giving them the debentures. Yeah, the debentures. That is number three. So post acquisition we need the post merger. Yeah, post merger EPS. And in this case, if every 200 ordinary shares, 200 ordinary shares are being exchanged for every what? For every five units. For five units of 10% debentures. Yeah, every 200. And we know Beta had 10 million, 10 million. There will be how many units? It will be 10 by 5 divided by 200. And our power value in this case uh, is uh, 500 per value. 500 shillings per. So this will be 50 over 200. Which will give us uh, 50 divided by 200. 0 0.25 debenture. 0 0.25 million debenture multiplied by 500. So that will get in shillings by 500. 125 million shillings 125 billion worth of debenture so that means uh, our interest that we shall pay on this debenture we are paying at 10 percent it will be 12.5 million interest net of tax interest net of tax will be 12.5 by 30 70 percent net of tax because we shall take it net of tax Interest is allowable for tax, 8.75 million. Therefore, our post merger EPS, still the formula applies, the combined uh, on net income, 150 plus 20. In this case, we minus interest, net of tax, and we divide by only 50, the shares of the predator, because we did not give uh, the target any shares. We shall have 150, you add 20, you minus interest, net of tax, and you divide by 50 which will give us 3.225 as our post merger. In this case, if we are giving them the debenture, one advantage of the debenture, it reduces the dilution in ownership of shares or dilution in EPS. When we are giving them shares, our EPS was 2.68. But when you compare, when we give them the debentures, our EPS increases from 2.68 to 3.25. Therefore, it is more advantageous giving them convertible security as compared to shares because one thing with shares they will lead to the dilution of ownership because the shareholders will increase and the number of shares will end up increasing so that was the first part second and the third the fourth part required us to find the combined EBIT and the post acquisition earning per share at the point of indifference between earnings of the firm under the financing plan in C2 and C3 so remember financing plan in C2 where we are giving them shares, C3, we are giving them convertible. So we normally say, and let me just do it here, the number four, uh, at the point of indifference, point of indifference, the point of indifference, EPS and option one should be the same as EPS and option two. Should be the same as EPS and option two. And we know EPS and option one, where we are having the shares, so it will be EBIT, 1 minus tax of a number of shares. But under option 2, it will be EBIT, we minus the interest. Because it's for the convertible, 1 minus tax divided by the number of shares. So here will be 0 0.7 EBIT. 0 0.7 EBIT. The number of shares was the combined here, 63.33. Which will be give us EBIT here. Interest, the interest, 12.5 uh, that we are paying. 
0 0.7 to the after tax over 50 because here and option 2 there is no dilution in ownership so this one uh, will be 0 0.7 EBIT over 63.33 when you open the bracket 0 0.7 EBIT minus uh, that one was giving us 8.75 uh, 8.75 over 50 that one you cross multiply yeah cross multiply and get 50 0 0.7 EBIT is equals to 63.33 0 0.7 EBIT minus 8.75 8.75 we go to 12.5 by 0 0.7 the after tax yeah that one gave us 8.75 so when you open the bracket 50 by 0.7 which will be 35 bit is equals to 63.33 by 0.7 e bit and we minus 63.33 by 8.75 this is 554 554.1375 so when you collect like terms, this one will be a positive when it comes to this side. 0.1375, EBIT minus 35 EBIT. So you'll end up having uh, so 44.331 minus 35, uh, 9 point. So 9.331 EBIT, and here is 554.1375. So divide by 9.331, divide by 9.331. So your EBIT at the point of indifference, when you divide 554.1375, you divide by answer, you'll get 59.387 EBIT in, in million, because they are in million of shillings. That was the first, it was having two, point, two parts and the EPS. Our EPS of that space i'll just use option one 0 0.7 ebit our ebit is 59.387 and we divide by 63 when you replace in both you'll get the same answer so 0 0.7 59.387 by 0 0.7 and you divide by 63.33 and you'll end up getting 0 0.656 that will be the EPS at the point of indifference. And you'll find that in that question, it was having 11 marks under the mergers and acquisition. And that is how that question was supposed to be done. We shall look at the second question. This was April 2022, question number 5A. Yeah, April. 2022. 2022. Question number 5A. Still on mergers and acquisition. So it says Songo Limited decided to acquire Trigger Limited. The financial data for the two companies are given as follows. We give it the Songo and Trigger Limited and their shillings in million, net sales, profit after tax, number of issued shares, earning per share, dividend per share, total market capitalization. So you are required pre-acquisition market price per share of the combined firm and post-acquisition earning per share if trigger limited shareholders are offered a share of 30 on a share for share and if price earning ratio of Songo drops to 12 times after acquisition determine the firm's post-acquisition market price per share so in this case when well, they talk about the post pre-acquisition pre-acquisition uh, MPS we take the total, they have given us the total market capitalization, total market capitalization, capitalization, and we divide by the number of shares, divide by the number of shares, number of shares, total market capitalization, divide by the number of shares. So for Songo, we had a market capitalization of 20 million, and the number of shares are 7.5. Then for Trigger, Trigger limited market capitalization of 45 and we divide by the number of shares which was 1.5 and that one will give us the pre-acquisition market price per share so when you start with the trigger when you divide 45 divided by 1.5 this one gives us 30 shillings 
per share. And for Songo, divided by 7.5, 56 per share. That way. That will be our pre-acquisition MPS. Number two, the post-acquisition EPS. Post-acquisition EPS. We have said is earnings or predata. Earnings of predata. And you add earnings of target. Earnings of target. And you divide by shares of predata. Shares of predator, number of shares in that case, plus new shares issued. New shares issued to target. Issued to target. You add new shares issued to target. So in our case, you'll have the earnings of Songo, profit after tax in this case, we had 28.13, and the one for trigger, 3.75. This one had 7.5 number of shares and trigger had 1.5. And we are agreeing to give them at a price of 30. Yeah, 30. Remember our exchange ratio? Yeah, non dilutive offer price over the MPS. Our MPS is 56. That way. So that one will give us when you add 28.13 plus 3.75. This will be that one. 0.88. Here, 1.5 by 30 over 56 and you add 7.5 8.3 so and you divide that 8.304 you'll end up getting 3.839 8.3 3.839 yeah, 3 as our post acquisition EPS. Then, number three, is whereby we need to calculate if the price earning ratio drops to 12 times after acquisition, determine the firm's post-acquisition MPS. So we know the fee ratio is MPS over EPS. So our post-merger MPS, therefore, will be the P ratio by the EPS. And you're told the EPS drops, uh, the P ratio drops 12 times. And our post merger, this is a post merger. Post merger EPS 3.839. Yeah, 12 by 3.839. 0.839. And you multiply by 12. So you'll end up having 46. 46.068 as a our post acquisition EPS. Then you're told to formulate a suitable criteria that should guide Songo in determining whether to acquire Trigger Limited. So the criteria for acquisition, huh? so the criteria that they should follow, they should consider number A, the form of consideration. Form of consideration, whether cash, form of consideration, whether, i.e., cash, or whether they should give them cash or shares. Remember, when we pay them cash, there is no dilution. Huh? But when we pay them using shares, there will be dilution. That is one thing. The other thing we should look at uh, is the synergy value. Synergies. Value. The values that are going, what we are going to gain uh, as a result of combining the two firms. Which synergies are we going to create? Is there any creation of synergy? And the other one, are we going to have tax savings? Yeah, any tax savings that may arise and the strategic rationale. Strategic rationale. Strategic rationale. Eh? Yeah, strategic, uh, strategic rationale is whereby acquisition of trigger may position us in a more strategic position whereby we may expand eh? or we may end up growing our business. Again, that's how that question was supposed to be solved.